And the simple fact is Christians today, uh, those who purport to be Christians, would rather teach a false gospel and go to Romans 10, where no one uh, can get saved by a prayer, than preach the true gospel, which is Romans 3, and get a man saved. And uh, that's the reality of it. Prayer saves no one. Prayer is not part of the gospel. And yet people uh, who, who claim to be soul winners will cling to this uh, like it's a, uh, you know, the, uh, they, they were drowning men and they got to hang on to it and fight for it. All right, what about Romans 10, 13? There's this big, huge thing going on. You know, it's getting bigger and bigger, is what I mean, of this thing of Romans 10 is not for us today. It's a false gospel. And the main proponents of this uh, is Ed Fenninger, Robert Breaker, Martin Richling, some of these other guys. And what they're saying is that they're essentially teaching hyper-dispensationalism, is that basically there are, because what hyper-dispensationalism is, is that one of the things of hyper-dispensationalism, there are other features of it. One of the features of it is that there are actually different gospels within the Pauline epistles. So there are different dispensations and there are different gospels within those different dispensations. That's one of the features with hyper-dispensationalism. There are others too. One of the other features of hyper-dispensationalism is there are basically two different bodies of Christ and everything like that. And it's been refuted. It's very easy to refute it. I mean, Romans, uh, the book of Romans refutes that. But what this thing is, is that they'll say that Romans 10 is a false gospel for us today. So basically they're saying that Paul was preaching the right gospel in Romans 1 to 9, but then he, and he stops in Romans 10, but then goes back to preaching it in Romans 11. I mean, it's, it's weird, really, really weird. And obviously the, what part of the thing is they'll say that Romans 10, 13, you know, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They'll say, well, that, that's not for us today. That's for the time of Jacob's trouble. Now, there's a couple problems with that. First of all, uh, where does the book of Revelation, which is in the time of Jacob's trouble, where is, where is anyone calling upon God to be saved? Second of all, uh, they'll say that Romans 10, uh, quite often what they do is they'll say Romans 3 is the gospel, but not Romans 10. Well, here's why it doesn't work. Because here's the problem is though and, and what they often will also say is that Romans 10 is speaking to the Jews and they'll go to Romans 10 I'm going to refute all these points they go to Romans 10 1 where it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel they might be saved and they'll say see he's Paul speaking the Jews he's not speaking the Christians well here's how you refute that because they say that Romans 3 is the gospel and not Romans 10 well here's how you can answer that and I, I use this argument quite a lot Romans 10 4 for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth and you go to verse 5. For Moses described it the righteous, righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Go to verse 6. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above. Now, what is written here, Romans 10, 4 to 6, it lines up perfectly with Romans 3. I'm going to prove to you that. Because they always say, like Ed Fenninger says this, uh, Robert Breaker say this, they'll say that Romans is the Romans 3, not Romans 10. Romans 3 is the gospel, not Romans 10. Well, again, verse 4 says, for Christ is the end of the law. Okay, that lines up with what uh, Paul said in Romans 3, verse, where is it? Verse 28. It says, therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And of course, uh, jump down to verse 27, it says, Whereas boasting it is excluded by what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. I mean, that lines up perfectly with what Paul wrote in Romans 10, 4 to 6. So the claim that Romans 10 is a false gospel, you have to say that Romans 10, 4 to 6, for Christ is the end of the law, uh, and he talks about to everyone that believeth. Um, so you think that's a false gospel too? And, and what it comes down to really this thing of oh, Romans 10 is a false gospel, it essentially comes down to them not wanting to come to the end of themselves and have to call upon God. And, and, and another thing they'll do is they'll say, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4 is the gospel. And again, Romans 3, uh, 10, 4 to 6 lines up with 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 1 to 4. So, I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, Romans 10, 4 lines up perfectly with uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Let me show you that. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And of course, Romans 10, 13, or not 10, 13, Romans 10, 4 also lines up with the feet, with uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. I'll show you what that says. It says, 
knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Jesus Christ, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Again, compare that back to Romans chapter 10, verse 4, where it says, For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. It lines up with what Paul wrote in Galatians 2. So, saying that Romans 10 is a false gospel, you have to also say that Galatians 2 is a false gospel because he's saying the same thing. And of course, what it comes down to is they'll say, well, Romans 10, 13 is, they'll say, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Prayer saves no one. And what they do is they love people like us, people like me, Brian, other people who believe in calling upon God. They'll lump us in with quick prayerism, all this other stuff. We don't believe in quick prayerism, okay? You call upon God from your heart as a natural reaction to getting saved. And a good verse they'll go to, it's kind of funny, they'll say it's a false gospel, but then they'll actually use, try to use Romans 10 to refute this. They'll say, verse 14, and they'll, they'll read verse 14 and say, see, look, it, it, you know, it refutes calling upon God. Let's read it. How then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And they'll say, see, look, you have to believe, and believing is what saved you. Um, it doesn't say that in the verse. It says you have to call. What it's saying is that a preacher has to go and preach to them the gospel, and then they believe, and as a natural reaction, they call upon God. It's ridiculous. So they'll say that Romans 10 is a false gospel, despite the fact that Romans 10, verse 4 to 6, lines up with the Galatians 2. And also, it lines up with Galatians 3, verse, where is it? Verse... Uh, where was the verse? Verse 26. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. And you can also go back to verse 21, where it says, Is the law that then, I'm not good at reading on a computer, is the law against, again, sorry, law then against the promises of God? God forbid, for there had been, had a, had a, sorry, had been a law given, which would give, which, yeah. Again, I, I'm not good at, I have that, I want to actually get a physical, physical copy of the King James Bible because huh, I'm not good at reading on a computer which could have given life, verily righteousness uh, should have been by the law. And then, uh, verse 22, But the scripture hath included that all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. And verse 23, But, uh, but before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto faith, which should be afterwards be revealed. Hmm. Good verse also proving dispensationalism too. Faith which should be revealed. So it wasn't revealed previous. You know, Funny how just God proves dispensationalism there too. And then it talks about, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. It lines up with Romans 10.4. For Christ is the end of the law. You know, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So we we're justified by faith. So saying that Romans 10 is a false gospel, you have to say that Galatians 3 is a false gospel too. It's ridiculous. And of course, uh, there's, I mean, there's so many scriptures I could go to, you know, uh, Titus 3, 5. Because again, this whole issue of, of Romans 10 being a false gospel, what it comes down to is they don't want to come to the end of their pride and admit, yeah, I'm a dirty sinner. I need Jesus Christ. I need to be saved. Titus 3, 5. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So it's not by our, our own righteousness. Again, compare that to Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Christ is our righteousness. I mean, I could just go on and on and on. You know, um, you can go to Romans chapter 4, verse 5. You know, it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Verse 6, Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord will not impute sin. Again, lines up with Romans 10, 4. Christ is the end of the law. You know, you know, it talks about blessed is a man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. You know, God is imputing righteousness to us without works. It lines up. So, claiming that Romans 10 is a false gospel is ridiculous. It's stupid. And, again, they'll say that, oh, talk, he's talking to Israel. And they'll say, they'll quote Romans 10, 1 to 3, where it says, you know, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel, they might be saved. Okay, he's not talking to Israel, he's talking about Israel. Okay? I mean, again... So, Paul was preaching in the right gospel in Romans 1 to 9, but then he stops in Romans 10, but then keeps doing it in Romans 11. Huh? That's weird. Very, very weird. And again, they'll just, they'll just, you know, and it's funny because um, if Paul is preaching a false gospel in Romans 10, not for us today, 
um, why does Romans chapter 1 verse number 1 say, uh, basically tell us who Paul is writing to, you know? Um, Romans chapter 1 verse number 1 to, 1 to 7 tell us that Paul is writing to the church, you know? I'm just sorry, I'm looking at my notes while I'm, while I'm talking, but he's writing to the church in Rome, not the Roman Catholic Church, not the pagan, satanic, idolatrous Roman Catholic Church, but the actual Christian church in Rome, the church that existed before the pagan, hocus pocus, idolatrous, satanic, pedophilic Roman Catholic Church. But uh, again, if you read verse 7, it says, To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul is speaking to the Roman church the church in Rome. So basically Paul was speaking to the Roman church in Romans 1 to 9, but then he stops in Romans 10 and then goes back in Romans 11. Ridiculous. And it's kind of funny because he'll say that Romans 11 is for us today. Well, Romans 11 would probably give the impression that Paul is speaking to the Jews, even though obviously he's not. Uh, but again, it's ridiculous. So don't believe this weird thing of Romans 10 being a false gospel. All you have to do, if you, if you ever ask, say that, if you ever run into these people who say that Romans 3 is the gospel but not Romans 10, just show them Romans 10, 4 to 6 and say that line, and just show them, compare Romans 10, 4 to 6 to um, Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 28, and see how it lines up perfectly. And compare that with Galatians 2, 16, Galatians 3, 24, or Galatians 3, pretty much the entire chapter. Uh, compare that, it lines up perfectly with those verses. So yeah, Romans 10, 13 is not a false gospel. Romans 10 is a gospel for us today in this uh, church age, in the time of the Gentiles. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.